Hey, I've said it once and I'll say it a thousand times, we need a training mode. I think it's kind of insane that after two years of playing this action RPG where people spend hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars to increase their damage and to play with new characters and teams, that we still don't have a standardized optimal way to test said characters and teams. Yeah, we have the world bosses, sure, which are set on annoyingly high respawn timers, still don't have that much HP, especially for whales, and which often take forever just to run over to. I'm looking at you, Primo Vishap. This dude living in goddamn Gibraltar, I swear to god, man. Okay, sure, yeah, we have What's-His-Face the training dummy who, by the way, has a literal achievement for, and I quote, being defeated with ease, like a fucking pussy. And sure, we have Abyss, which by its very nature is super inconsistent because of the lineup of monsters and also because the ley line effects can skew the output of the characters that we're trying to test. <sighs> Look, the point is we need a mode that's one, easy to access, two, has a training dummy with infinite HP, and three, has multiple parameters to edit and toggle that basically every other game with a training mode has made standard. But what exactly would a training mode entail? How do we access it? What sort of training dummy would be picked? There's a ton of different ways that Hoyoverse could go about making it. Before we dive into my ideas on how they would make this work, hitting the video with a like and even subscribing to the channel does a ton to help me out. I really appreciate it. But one way they could do this is by making a training dummy teapot furnishing. Hence the other video where I made a teapot hypostasis. The idea is that you buy the blueprint from Tubby like any of the other little side modes that we've gotten so far, and then, when placing it down, would have both the training dummy and an interactable sign that would let us change all the parameters. Doesn't actually have to be a hypostasis, by the way, I just kind of figured a hypostasis could make a good fit because they can change forms on a whim, they're tightly associated with the elements for testing purposes, and also because <laughs> building a floating rectangle in the teapot is pretty easy. So I do think that this method would work out pretty well, but I'd like to propose a second idea. What if we got a new, dedicated realm in the teapot for combat? It would use the same UI and the same building blocks as the custom domain builder event, so all of those resources that went into that event won't have gone to waste, while also, and this is key, okay, take notes, letting us place down our own sets of enemies. Hear me out. Genshin loves rewarding new gameplay mechanics and features by trickle-feeding them through exploring the world and collecting timed rewards. Oh, what's that? You want to enjoy this new music player we put into the game? <laughs> well, you don't get to just have all the tracks from the start, and you can't just buy them all from a shop. No, that'd be too easy. No, get out there, explore the map, and hunt down the tracks yourself. Oh, what's that? You want to put overworld animals into your teapot? Come on, man, you can't just buy them from an animal vendor. No, it'd be too easy. You got to go out there and catch those animals yourself. I think the same mentality could apply to the enemies we place in training mode, too. We already have a capture net mechanic and someone who makes them. Plus, if you remember, and if I remember, because I'm 70, going senile. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure she even has dialogue mentioning how she's working on being able to catch stronger beings with those nets. So, in a new update, give us a new world quest where she develops a new net capable of capturing enemies, let us buy like, I don't know, five a week, like we already do for the animal nets, and then let us go out and capture our own enemies. Hell, dude, you could even make it like a Pokemon minigame where you need to get their HP down to, let's say, 30% or less before they become capturable. Want to test against world bosses? Well, we could either use the same idea of getting their HP down below 30%, and then obviously if you capture them that way, you wouldn't get any mats from defeating them. Or maybe we could even like craft replica versions of the world bosses using a certain amount of their mats to recreate, which would definitely appease to Hoyoverse's desire to get us burning as much resin as humanly possible. Either way, I would definitely appreciate having both regular enemies and world bosses to work with. I'm sure there are plenty of people that would be annoyed by not having immediate access to the enemies, but personally, I don't know, I kinda like this stuff. Granted, I'm also the dickhead that actually enjoyed the 2000 fish grind, so I mean, take anything I say with a grain of salt. But hear me out, hear me out, okay? Going out and hunting for the enemies gives my resinless, maidenless ass something to do besides chipping my soul away on dailies. And more importantly than me being a grind heavy bozo is I hope I've at least made a case that there's so many different ways that this kind of game mechanic, right? This type of gameplay mode could be tied into and incorporate all of the past design principles that Genshin has founded itself on. There are so many different ways that they could use this as a vehicle to tie in a whole bunch of different gameplay modes and styles together. And man, just think of the end results, right? Imagine being able to set down like 30 Healy Trolls to be able to test child's Riptides whenever you want. Imagine being able to make a true archery minigame by setting groups of enemies up on platforms and then trying to use headshots to knock them all off as quickly as you can. Combine 
combining the training mode with an enemy capture system and with the custom domain builder could create countless combinations of goodies to play around with. I love the idea of tying this all in with the teapot because it means we can then share our training grounds with friends and host little tournaments and stuff. Uh, plus, it could also mean we can test our DPS with co-op buddies, which would be near essential if we ever get dungeons or raids in the future. Cause like, no, no guys, it's, it's totally happening. No, we're getting more permanent endgame content aside from Abyss. Uh, yeah. So whether or not we get the craftable teapot version or the capturable enemies version of a training mode, here is my full laundry list of the features I need. A toggle so that enemies can have infinite HP. No more dickheads dying in like three seconds, Masanori. A customizable timer that automatically begins training and starts tracking the total damage from each individual party member, along with adding up the entire party's damage in total. After the time ends, we could have a window pop up breaking down how much damage each character contributed. If you want to end the time early, you can use the same shortcut that's already assigned to ending minigames early, which on PC would be P. I think one of the most important aspects of the training mode is whether or not you use this custom time limit or if you just go in with no time at all, there should definitely be a damage tracker. It should add up all the damage that you've done, whether it's over that set period of time that you set for the custom time limit or just indefinitely until you hit the reset button, which would be that same shortcut that is the P key on PC. A toggle that prevents all knockback on small targets or enables knockback to practice cool Devil May Cry combos. A toggle that gives characters permanent energy to test out bursts without needing needing to recharge them each time, or you can enable normal energy management to practice your rotations. A menu that lets you keep any element permanently applied to an enemy in order to test elemental reactions easily. One that prevents elements from being applied if you want to avoid reactions for whatever reason, or a neutral option that just lets elements be applied like normal. And last but not least, an AI toggle for enemies to either act stationary or behave like normal. That way, if you actually want to practice against an enemy's moveset, the option's there for you, or if you want to practice countering with somebody like Beidou or Yunjin, you have the means to, or if you just want to wail against a stationary target, the option's there too. So what do you think? Would you be on board with capturing enemies to put them in a training mode, or would you prefer to just craft a training dummy for the teapot and be done with it. Are there any features I missed from my laundry list that you'd like to see included? Let me know. If you haven't already, join me on asking for a training mode in the Genshin surveys like a goddamn Karen spear bomb. Only we can save the lives of all these Genshin combat guide dandies that are still slaving away on sentient salads to help us create our builds. Anyway though, there's a lot more quality of life features that Genshin's lacking. I have a video with like, I don't know, 14 other items that I'd love to see included like weapon transmogs and an overhaul of the gadget system that's coming on the way, so check it out. And either way, thanks again for liking the video, thanks again for subscribing, thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you for whatever the next video may or may not be. And hey, if it's really cool, I'm, I'm gonna chill here for another like 10 seconds. So that we can like, so we can get our eight minute limit for YouTube to help with like algorithm stuff. How you doing? Oh, oh, we're getting near the end now. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, bye. <laughs>